Hiya, Amy here with Amy's Wears, and I have a lightning fast masculine card idea to share with you. Now, I have this foam cling stamp, or rubber cling stamp rather. It's from Hero Arts. I have three distressed oxides, lumberjack plaid, which is the newest one, aged mahogany, and fossilized amber. And I have a card base of 110 pound cardstock. Here's the finished card. It came together super quick, pretty low profile. It has some blingage um, in those sentiments, but they aren't popped up, so it's still nice and flat. Should be easy to ship. So the way I'm doing this, I remove the foam insert from my original size Misty, and I do have this sticky um, insert sheet that I got from scrapbook.com. I will link it as well as any other available products in the video description box below, but I'm just using some mint tape, also from scrapbook.com, just to kind of hold it in place because it does shift around a little bit inside my Misty. Now I'm using the sticky adhesive to hold down this card base, and this is not a panel, it's a card base, so I'm going to use a little bit of tape also to kind of hold that closed while I do my stamping because the beauty of the Misty is you can stamp as many times as you need to, which I need to do for stamping with multiple colors, but you don't want it to shift around on you. So um, just making sure that it's covered completely by this rubber stamp, and then I'm going to throw this tape in there just to hold it down. Now I'm going to use a mixture of these three Distress Oxide colors. If you're not familiar with Distress Oxides, they are a hybrid ink, meaning that they are partially dye and partially pigment. And what I've always liked about them is you kind of get the best of both worlds. They're, um, you know, kind of opaque because of the pigment component, but they don't quite take as long to dry as a regular pigment. So I'm just starting off with the fossilized amber and going right in the center. And then I use my stamp chamois, which is damp, just to kind of soften the edges to help the colors blend together better. Um, so I'm just going to wipe this off and I kind of actually like it like that and make a cool grungy card. So I could have stopped there. I kind of really like how that looked. Sorry for all the camera shake. I'm a little bit, a little bit violent with my stamping today. So sorry about that. Um, but next I'm going to come in with this brand new lumberjack plaid and this is my first time using it. Jeez, making myself dizzy looking at this. I'm really sorry. I'm coming at it like a lumberjack with the lumberjack plaid. See what I did there? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna um, soften the edges on this as well and kind of put that right down on top. But honestly, if it's not a super good blend, I'm not worried about it because I want the design to look a little bit grungy. I feel like it kind of lends itself to the whole idea of a masculine card. But, you know, honestly, this card would be cool for anybody. So, um, it doesn't just have to be for guys, but I know a lot of us struggle with um, coming up with card ideas for the for the gents in our life. So now I'm coming in with the aged mahogany and kind of coming around the corner. So it gives it a little bit of a vignette look. And I'm using my press tool um, that I got from Tailored Expressions just to kind of apply even pressure across the top of my misty door. So I recently acquired this uh, background stamp. I don't know if it's still available, but I often forget about my background stamps. I mean, they're one of the most versatile things um, in your craft room. They basically allow you to make your own pattern paper, your own backgrounds in a jiffy. So um, I need to not neglect them so much. I need to get back to using them more often. So um, I'm just going to wipe this off. I have the three colors here kind of in a little bit of a hodgepodge and then you bend the the sheet to kind of pull your card off it. If you try to pull your card off then it might kind of warp it and make your card bendy. So if you have something similar to these sticky mats then remember to kind of bend the mat away from your card rather than bending your card away from the mat if that makes sense. So here you can see I'm struggle bus with these mag- look at this that magnet has a mind of its own and I realize uh oh I got another magnet somewhere where is it? I thought it was on the bottom of my misty. Um, it was just kind of sandwiched in the layers here and took some lumberjack strength to pull these apart let me tell you. Um, but I just put those back in and get that out of the way. And then I have a couple pieces of color cardstock. So this is a fun way to use up some of your color cardstock if you have um, too much of it like I do. But another option would be uh, to just ink blend the same colors you used in the background. Like you could use the fossilized amber um, and the aged mahogany and kind of create your own paper or even just swipe it across the cardstock if you don't want to ink blend. Um, and then you can make your own custom colored 
cardstock. But um, I have some of this cardstock, so I decided to cut out this awesome, imposing, large die cut from Lawn Fawn out of two colors um, off screen in my die cutting machine. And I'm using my little handy dandy pokey tool to poke out the little fiddly bits. And then I'm just going to apply these both on the front of the card. So I have to decide, first of all, if I want the brown on top with a yellow shadow or the yellow on top with a brown shadow. So just kind of fiddling with this and seeing which way I like best. I feel like the yellow kind of doesn't stand out quite enough. Um, another option here, if you want to jazz it up even more, rather than doing an offset um, two pieces of cardstock, you could also cut some fun foam. Um, and then you could have that in a fun color as well. So that would help it have some dimension and help it pop off the busy background. Um, but you could also apply some color there. And I use um, this adhesive back fun foam that I get from Amazon, which is really fun. Um, so that's another technique that you can absolutely do. And you can offset that too, or just line it up directly underneath it. And you'll have, you know, some separation with the dimension. But here I'm, I'm going rogue and using my liquid glue. Um, you guys probably know I I can't stand liquid glue but this die cut is so big that it's not so bad so I'm just I'm just going for it um just taking my time applying glue all to the back and then I'm gonna apply that directly over this yellow piece and then I'm gonna offset it so that there's a shadow of the yellow to the right and you can go dramatic or just a little tiny kind of very thin shadow and I'm gonna attach this um, with some pressure and look at the oozage. See, this is why I just can't get away from the oozage. Oh, well, it's still okay. I'm going to come in again and um, do the same thing again with my liquid glue. Um, but I did give it a second to um, attach the two pieces with my acrylic block. So just throw something heavy on it for a minute, give it a chance to kind of cure a little bit and then apply more glue or whatever way you want to attach it to your card base, your adhesive of choice. You could do little fiddly foam bits as well and pop it up that way. Um, whatever floats your boat. But I'm nearly done eight hours later applying this liquid glue and I will put it right down smack dab on this card base. So just lining it up here and again I'll use the the acrylic black just to give it a second to kind of attach to the card base and you can see I added some little of these clear droplets. They're really cool. They look almost like water. And I added a little sentiment on the inside of the card that matches. Cheers, birthday boy. And that's going to finish my card. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.